All right, we are moving right along and we're going to jump into multiplying and dividing with scientific notation. If you are taking this class as the advanced seventh grade group, you are doing lesson 1.08. <clears throat> if you are doing this with the pre-algebra group, this is lesson 1.06. So make sure you open the corresponding note-taking guide and let's get started with the vocabulary. So it is important that we understand the associative property of multiplication. We can group numbers in different ways and the product will always be the same. This only applies if everything is multiplication. Then we have the commutative property of multiplication, which means we can change up the order of how we multiply. And then we have scientific notation, the method of writing very large or very small numbers using exponents in which a number is expressed as the product of a power of 10 and a number that is between one and 10. So make sure you press pause before going back to the first page. Our objectives in this lesson are to multiply numbers in scientific notation, to divide numbers in scientific notation, and to find how many times smaller one number is than another or how many times larger one number is than another. <clears throat> so let's jump right in. Multiplication with scientific notation. Before we do that, we want to review the product of power law. We've already done this, but let's review it. When we're multiplying numbers that have the same base, we are going to add the exponents. So same thing, they have the same base, and then we have negative six plus negative one, which is negative seven. And here we have the same base, and then we have three plus negative nine, which is negative six. So make sure you double check, make sure you review those product of power laws. And then we wanna write down the steps for multiplying numbers in scientific notation. So we are gonna rewrite the expression by grouping the first factors together and the second factors together using both the commutative and associative properties. Then we're gonna multiply the first factors then we're going to multiply the second using that product of power law. Do you know, I mean, this is why vocab is so important. We're using so many old vocabulary words. We need to know what it is so we know how to use it. Then we're going to rewrite the final answer in scientific notation if necessary. Our final answer may already be in scientific notation. So let's practice. We need to find the product of three times 10 to the sixth power and two times 10 to the third power. So if you notice, this is all multiplication, which is why we can use those commutative and associative properties. So what we wanna do is rewrite. So we have three times two and 10 to the six times 10 to the third. Because everything is multiplication here, we can do that. We're allowed to do that. So we have three times two is six. And then 10 to the six and 10 to the third have the same base. So we're gonna add the exponents and have six times 10 to the ninth for our final answer. And we can double check our work and we got it. All right, so now, we have another question, and this is, we're just gonna practice, 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 okay? So we have 1.8 times 10 to the negative 12th power times 3.4 times 10 to the negative fifth power. So we can rewrite that as 1.8 times 3.4 times 10 to the negative 12th times 10 to the negative fifth. So we're gonna do 1.8 times 3.4. We're gonna get 6.12 and then negative 12 plus negative five is negative 17. and we can check on our different steps to see that we got the same answer. 
All right, let's keep going. We have 6.75 times 10 to the 6 times 2.4 times 10 to the negative 13. And we're going to rewrite that. So 6.75 times 2.4, go ahead and use your calculator. That gives us 16.2. And then six plus negative 13 gives us a negative seven. But this is not in scientific notation, guys. We have got to move this decimal one place over to the left. And if we're going one place to the left, we're going to add one to our exponent, which makes it a negative six. 1.62 times 10 to the negative sixth power. Let's go ahead and double check that. There we go. We added that one, we moved it over, and we get 1.62 times 10 to the negative sixth power. Please go to page three and check to make sure that you are understanding how to do these problems and then click on the, try to solve it and then click on the blue button to open up the answers. And we are jumping right into division with scientific notation. <clears throat> so we're going to review the quotient of Power's Law. Very similar to the um, product of Power Law, but instead of adding, we're going to subtract. So we have, the same base, 10, and we're going to do 7 minus 2. Very hard to see. Same base, 10, and then we're going to do negative 5 minus negative 3. And this one gets a little weird <clears throat> because we want to use that additive inverse and change negative 3 to positive 3. So remember, we change subtraction to addition and we change the second number from, its, from whatever it is to its opposite. So instead of negative five minus negative three, it will be negative five plus positive three, which gives us a negative two. Then we have 10 to the ninth over 10 to the negative second. And same thing, we have a subtraction problem and a negative number. So we're gonna change that to plus positive two. Nine minus negative two becomes nine plus positive two. And so if you need to review that, that is the additive inverse. It's really important that we remember how to use that. All right, now take a second to write down the steps for dividing numbers in scientific notation. Add these to your notes, because when in doubt, we can go back to our notes and read, oh, step one, rewrite the expression by grouping the first factors together and the second factors together using the associative property. Step two, divide the first two factors, then divide the second factors using the quotient of Power's Law and then rewrite the final answer in scientific notation if necessary. So if you didn't get that all written down, that's okay. Please pause the video and write it down. That is the best part about having these recorded is that you can press pause, you can write what you need to write, and then you can move on. So we're breaking this question up into two pieces. We're gonna have five divided by two, and 10 to the 12th power divided by 10 to the fifth power. Five divided by two is 2.5. And then 10 to the 12th divided by 10 to the fifth, we're gonna do 12 minus seven, 12 minus five, which equals seven. All right, let's double check, perfect. Now we've got more dividing. Let me go ahead and clean up some space for us to work. 
we have 9.18 divided by 7.65, 10 to the negative fourth divided by 10 to the sixth. So use your calculator. What is 9.18 divided by 7.65? And we get 1.2. Now we have negative four minus six. And I really like that additive inverse change subtraction to addition and change positive six to negative six. And we get 10 to the negative 10th power. I really don't like doing it this way. It's confusing. We're really a lot more likely to make mistakes, okay? This is the way that's just a little bit easier for us to understand every time. So when we click on our steps, we see that we have 1.2 times 10 to the negative 10th power. And another example on this page, we have 1.563 divided by 5.21 and 10 to the negative 23rd power over 10 to the negative ninth power. So when we do 1.563 divided by 5.21, use your calculator. And you should get 3 tenths. Now we have negative 23 minus negative nine. I'm going to write that as negative 23 plus positive 9. We change subtraction to addition, and we use the opposite of the second number. And that is going to give us a negative 14. But this is not in scientific notation, guys. It is not between 1 and 10. So we need to move it one place to the right, which means we need to subtract 1 from our exponent. When we do that, we get three times 10 to the negative 15th power. Same thing, we have 14 minus one, which is 14 plus negative one, which makes it negative 15. So let's double check our work. Perfect, three times 10 to the negative 15th power. Now on page five, please go and try these practice problems. Ooh, I see this one's already kind of tricky. It has just a 10 and no exponent. Please review what that means. There is an exponent there. There's something we're supposed to remember. When we don't see an exponent, what is the exponent? All right, and our last page for today, think like a mathematician. How many times smaller is eight than 24? Well, we know that eight times three equals 24. <clears throat> so 24 is three times bigger than eight, or we could say eight is three times smaller than 24. But here's the really neat thing. We could set this up like an equation. So we're, we're asked how many times bigger is eight than 24? So we would just do eight times what number makes 24? And then we could divide by eight, and we could find out that x equals three. Eight is three times smaller than 24. Okay, we could do the same thing on this next question here. How many times smaller is 5.2 than 15.6? So we just multiply x times 5.2 and we're gonna divide by 5.2 and we would find that x is three. So 15.6 is three times bigger than 5.2, or 5.2 is three times smaller than 15.6. The question could be either way, and the answer works both ways. Now let's apply it with scientific notation. So how many times bigger is eight times 10 to the 12th power, then 2.5. Okay, hold on one second, let me erase this.
Okay. So it's saying how many times larger is eight times 10 to the 12th than 2.5 times 10 to the 11th. So this is the number times some number that becomes eight times 10 to the 12th. So we're going to divide both sides by 2.5 times 10 to the 11th. This will cancel out here and we're just going to be left with X. And over here, we're going to do eight divided by 2.5. We're going to get 3.2. And then 12 minus 11 is one. So eight times 10 to the 12th power is 3.2 times 10 larger than 2.5 times 10 to the 11th. Okay, so we had 3.2 times 10 to the first power. When we simplify that, it's really just 3.2 times 10, which equals 32. So eight times 10 to the 12th power is 32 times larger than 2.5 times 10 to the 11th power. Let's try another example. How many times smaller There we go. How many times smaller is five times 10 to the negative seventh power than one times 10 to the fourth power? So we're gonna divide both sides. And one divided by five, we probably know that, that's 0 0.2. Negative four minus negative seven is the same as negative four plus seven, which equals a positive three. So we have 0 0.2 times 10 times 10 times 10, or we can move the decimal point one, two, three places, which is 200. So we see that five times 10 to the negative seventh power is 200 times smaller than one times 10 to the negative fourth power. Now make sure you do your last five slides on page seven, go through and answer the question, show your work on your note-taking guide, work on the assignment, do your best and have a great day.